Hi guys, I hope that you're all doing really, really well. Now, this has probably been the longest period of time that I have gone without filming a YouTube video. I think it's been about, hmm, maybe four to five weeks since I've filmed a video, maybe even longer. And to be honest, it's because I don't want to talk about it in this video. This video is not about talking about myself, but I have been in the worst burnout of my entire life and I don't want to cry, but it has been really hard and I don't want to sound ignorant or uh, just out of touch with reality because of everything that's going on in the world, but it has been really, really hard. So I'm going to just pull it back one sec. I just wanted to say to any of you guys who are feeling super burned out and just really hopeless and like you have nothing left inside of you we can get through this together and i want to tell you guys to take a break and to rest because that's exactly what i'm planning to do i'm actually i don't know why i do this to myself but i'm going away tomorrow actually no tonight i leave tonight to australia for just over two weeks i'm going there with pierre and his parents so his parents will meet my mom for the first time and I just, I'm really looking forward to completely just switching off, which if you guys follow me and keep up with me on social media, you will see that I have been really not active recently. And that's because of this burnout. I've been talking about it with my psychologist and everything, but I just really, guys, I am really struggling. And I just wanted to say that if you guys are feeling the same way, take a break. I know it's hard. It's really hard, but you need to take a break and prioritize mental health because it's so it's so important because it can spiral out of control really quickly. So yeah, anyway, I'm so sorry for the rant. I wanted to do a video on my most worn perfumes of the year. Now you guys, I mentioned this in a TikTok video, but 2023 has been not the best year for me in terms of fragrance discoveries. I usually feel that I find my obsession every single year. Last year, it was God of Fire and Sospiro Vibrato, maybe even Spiro Vibrato the year before, I don't remember. But usually I find like the obsession and I had some comments on my TikTok videos being like, but what about this fragrance? But what about that fragrance that you said you loved? And I loved a lot of releases this year, a lot of them, but none of them became like my obsession. When I say an obsession, I mean that I wear that fragrance every single day, every single day for weeks at a time, like Vibrato Sospiro. I wore it so much, you guys. It was the only scent that I wanted to wear for literally like two months, three months straight. And I ran out of my bottle. I got a new one, etc. Same with God of Fire. At some point, I was just so hooked on that scent. Gris Chanel, but years ago now, Dolina, years ago now, but this year I didn't really find my obsession, which kind of made me sad in a way. So I'm hoping that in 2024 that will happen for me. With that being said, I do have like my obsession right now. I know I just said I didn't have one, but it's kind of weird. I will explain later in this video. I have an obsession. I cannot stop wearing it. I love it so much, but I got it a few weeks ago. So anyways, let's get into this video. I just want it to be casual sitting with you guys talking about what I wore the most this year. I'm going to start out with a fragrance that actually sits in my bathroom. No, you should not leave your fragrance in the bathroom. So the first fragrance is Jo Malone Wood Sage and Sea Salt. I think I've done like a bunch of videos with this specific bottle and it just kind of keeps slowly going down and down because I don't want to run out of the scent but I love it so much I don't know what it is about wood sage and sea salt but for me personally this is one of the most addictive fresh fragrances that I have ever tried in my life like I'm not joking to you guys there is something really addictive about wood sage and sea salt and it is absolutely by far my favorite out of the shower freshy because it's not an obvious fresh fragrance it's fresh in a weird way you have some sage you have a like kind of a sea salt note you have this kind of musky sweetness going on it's fresh slightly aquatic and a little bit yeah like musky a little touch of something sweet and salty it's just so good it actually kind of plays in the same pool as pacific rock moss from goldfield and banks except that one is much more citrus much more aquatic 
I feel like they are similar in a way though, but I love Wood Sage and Sea so it's just so good. And I think it was probably in my most worn from last year, or maybe even the year before, because it's just a scent that I pull for all the time out of the shower. So Wood Sage and Sea Salt from Jo Malone, absolutely love it. And it will probably be in my next year's list as well. I do want to get another bottle because I feel like, I don't know if you guys are the same, but I just refuse to finish a bottle. Like. I don't know why, but it's just, I don't want to have to purchase a new scent. <laughs> Let's stick with my bathroom and what I have in there. This is Mise en Sur White Neroli. So random, you guys, like so freaking random. Look at, I, you can see I've been wearing this one a lot. So random. I have hated Neroli since I started getting into fragrances a really long time ago. I never could appreciate the note of Neroli. Like, I remember back in the day when Neroli Portofino was like such a hyped up scent. I went to try it a bunch of times and I was like, this? Like, people think this is amazing? Like, what are they on? This is horrible. Like, I could not understand the hype with Neroli. I just didn't. I don't understand the note. I just didn't understand it. It's bitter, it's green, it's kind of floral, it's a bit like woody, it's weird. I just didn't like it for such a long time. But something happened this year. It kind of happened after I turned 25, I feel. I know that's kind of strange, but I just started to love Neroli. I don't know whether it's because it kind of is quite a like a nostalgic fragrance note or I'm just getting older. I don't know, but I'm starting to love the note. It's not something that I wear to feel sexy by any means. It's not something that I necessarily want my, you know, identity to be defined by the note of Neroli. Like it's not that much of a love for me, but I do have to say, I am loving to wear Neroli out of the shower and when it's hot and I want something crisp and fresh and classy, that's what I'm pulling for my Neroli fragrances. So right now for me, white Neroli is like the perfect out of the shower scent. And also I feel like Neroli, it's used a lot in spas, like spa retreats. And I feel like that kind of unconsciously put something kind of peaceful in my mind. So that's why I really like this fragrance, White Neroli from Mise en It kind of makes me feel like, yeah, I just came out of a really luxurious spa treatment and I love it. Like it's, again, it's not something that I'm gonna wear on a date. I'm gonna wear to the mall. I'm gonna wear to get compliments. Actually, it does get me compliments, but I'm mostly wearing this one out of the shower when I wanna feel clean. So yeah, Mise en Sur, White Neroli. I feel like I'm blabbing in this video. So let's continue a little quicker. I got Coco Noir back in my collection this year. So of course it had to be in this video because as soon as I got it back into my collection, I could not stop wearing the scent. And it made me realize how much this fragrance plays a role in my perfume collection because it's just such a gorgeous signature scent. And that is exactly how I treat this fragrance. It feels like a signature to me. Like it feels really like one of my signature fragrances. When I don't know what to wear and I'm completely overwhelmed, which is happening more and more actually, I pull for Coco Noir. I have a few staple fragrances that when I'm overwhelmed, I pull for them and Coco Noir is definitely one of them. It's such a gorgeous, very classic rose patchouli scent with some resinous touches, a lot of sandalwood, a little bit of sweetness in the base. Coco Noir is such an iconic fragrance from the house and I really, really recommend checking it out. It makes me feel so classy, so womanly, so put together and just so, I don't know, just so good when I wear this one. So Coco Noir from Chanel. Of course, I wore my fragrance a lot this year, especially at night when I would go out at night. I love wearing Min Yu Yidemi. It's just the perfect gourmand in my opinion. It is not too sweet. It's also not too spicy. I know that there is a uh, cardamom and pimento in here, but it doesn't, it's not that much uh, it's not so present in the scent. It's in the opening, but then it starts to settle down and you're left with the most beautiful, delicious, coffee, caramelized, milky gourmand fragrance with a soft woody base and a little bit of tobacco in there as well. It is just so beautiful, you guys. Really, really, really a... Just, I don't know how to explain it. This fragrance makes me so happy. And I wanna tell you guys something, it is so funny. Like this is not even a, a joke, like I'm not exaggerating at all. Minuit de Me is Pierre's mum's favorite fragrance ever of all time. She's already gone through two bottles. I actually did gift her the Shrobsky one as well, but she keeps it more as like a, 
a decoration, I guess. But I've gifted her two bottles of the normal Minuit to me and she's gone through two of them. She loves it, which is so flattering to me because she has a lot of perfumes. Like she has so many. And the one that she wears the most is Minuit to me. She also loves Gris Chanel and she loves as well, what else? Those are her two favorites, Minuit to me and Gris Chanel, but Minuit to me at the top. So that just makes me super, super happy to hear. And yeah, but anyways, Minuit to me, it's such a beautifully balanced gourmand fragrance with amazing longevity and projection. Because Minuit to me has a lot of vanilla inside of it, the more and more that it sits on your shelf and macerates, the better that it gets. So I just love it. I really recommend it, Minuit to me from Fragrance Sublime myself. Another really easy way is Ex Nihilo's Fleur Narcotique the X-Ray. This, like I said, is an easy reach fragrance for me. It's something that I wear when I want something fresh yet very feminine at the same time. This is exactly what it is. This is not a citrus fragrance. This is a very fresh musky clean floral fragrance that will make you feel really fresh but also really feminine and pretty at the same time. This is a lot of peony, a lot of musk. You do have a little bit of this kind of bright citrusy vibe, but not citrus in a citrus way, if you know what I mean. It just has that crisp freshness on top. You have some florals in there. You have a little bit of sweetness. It's very plush and just really musky and it's honestly, when I smell this fragrance, it's one of the prettiest fragrances that I've ever smelled in my life. And actually I have Le Vent from Ormond Jane and they are probably 95% similar. So get whichever one you would prefer, which one you find cheaper. But the one that I wore more this year was Fleur Narcotique, the X-Ray. Okay, so the fragrance that I wore the most this summer, as you guys know, if you follow me, I went away for a summer. I usually go to France with Pierre over the summer months and I really did not like my selection this year. I was so sad because once I got to France and I realized what I had brought with me I was kind of like what was I thinking like I just didn't love the fragrances that I brought I cannot explain it to you guys I just didn't enjoy them while I was in like I, while I was on summer vacation I just didn't enjoy the fragrances that I brought so by default the most worn fragrance for me this summer was Solaris from Penhaligons and I don't mean by default in a negative way I just mean because I didn't really want to wear any of my other scents so I wore Solaris the most this was the only fragrance that I brought with me that I really felt happy and really good wearing this summer. Solaris is the most beautiful floral fragrance that gives you that kind of nukes body oil vibe. I love this fragrance. Like it's probably one of my one of my favorite tropical solar florals that I have tried in a very long time, you guys. You know for me that the one that holds the top spot is Ilang Ilang Nosy Bee, Ujun Intense, um, what else do I like? I love a bunch of tropical florals, but I would say all of you that love that solar creamy sunscreen floral, you have to check out Solaris. It is absolutely incredible. And actually I'm thinking right now because I'm going to Australia, like I said tonight, it's summertime in Australia. So maybe I'm gonna bring Solaris with me. I don't know yet. It's still the decision that I have to make to go through all my fragrances and pick them out. But I want like a nice creamy floral to wear while I'm in Australia. But such a beautiful scent. I will say, however, the only thing that lets this fragrance down is the long dirty projection. It's not that good, but I love the scent. I think the way that they have composed it is so perfect. It's not too creamy and coconutty, but it's also not too fresh and kind of bitter orange blossom neroli floral. It's perfectly balanced in between and I love it so much. Really recommend that you guys check this one out. You can see actually from my bottle, I really wore this one all summer long and I love it a lot. Really clean fragrance that I wore this year. This was definitely my go-to like clean musk. This is Apollonia from Zerzhov. Honestly, you guys, this is by far the best white musk fragrance that I've ever tried. Like the quality of Apollonia is just on another level to anything that I've ever smelled. It is pure perfection. This is a really buttery, creamy, soft, powdery, musky 
musk fragrance and it's just pure perfection. I actually have the notes on the back of this fragrance and it says white flowers, iris butter and white musk. So yeah, you pretty much get all of that. I don't actually get a white floral essence. I really just get that orris butter and that white musk wrapped up. It's so smooth and creamy, slightly powdery. It's just so beautiful you guys like really a beautiful fragrance very easy to wear very classic very clean very elegant i know people will hate this term but it's very sorry i know people hate this term but it is very old money if i can say that and i just it's not for that reason that i love it i just love this fragrance and i have found that it layers really beautifully with so many of my fragrances whether you want to layer it with a floral whether you want to layer it with something a little more contrasting like this one whether you want to layer it with white neroli like it layers really beautifully with a lot of fragrances so that's another reason why i wore it so much this year especially in the summertime especially in the dubai summer when i wanted to feel really clean and fresh out of the shower i would put apollonia first followed by a nice smooth citrus scent and it just worked so beautifully next up we have nuit bleu from violet you can see from my bottle that i wore this one a lot now I'm looking at the most worn for me and you can really see you can really see a running theme here. A lot of the fragrances that I wore the most this year, I'm going to speak about some more after, but a lot of them are very clean. This is Nuit Bleu like I said from Violet. This is a gorgeous um kind of not dupe, it's like an interpretation of Prada Infusion de Iris. I love this scent. It's so fresh yet powdery lipsticky musky clean but very classic it's very mature and sophisticated and i just love it you guys you definitely have that prominent kind of powdery lipstick vibe but it's fresh and pillowy and silky and musky and it's just it's really beautiful it does smell really similar to Prada Infusion to Iris so if you like that scent you will definitely love this one this again was something that I was pulling for a lot in the high heat in the summer when I wanted to feel clean and fresh and elegant but in a more sophisticated and mature way like I mentioned in some videos but I wore this one a lot for meetings when I wanted to feel really professional and really you know on my game that's when i was wearing nuit bleu i love the fragrance this is not something that makes me feel sexy by any means you guys like this is not what i would consider at all something sexy but it's something classy and sometimes i want to smell classy and i'm lucky enough to have a collection where one day if i want to feel sexy i have a lot of options one day if i want to feel classy i have a lot of options one day if i want to feel clean i have a lot of options so this one for me is a classy scent and that is what it is Classy and clean, I would say. I was not certain that I was going to wear this one as much as I did, but this is Attrape Rêve from Louis Vuitton. Now, I love the Louis Vuitton collection of fragrances, but I do feel that they are extremely overpriced. Like, I really want to get... I want to buy a bunch of them at the moment. I have about eight or so on my wish list. Um, the next one being Nouveau Monde, which is a beautiful oud fragrance. Very complex, very dark, very slightly animalic like i don't think everyone would like it but it's hard to pull the trigger because i just cannot justify spending that much but i will at some point but i feel like as i've gotten older the the harder i find it to spend money on fragrance like i it's hard for me to justify that but anyways a trap rev is this gorgeous like fruity patchouli it's sweet, it's very feminine. You have a lot of peony. I think you have some lychee in here, the patchouli. It's very, very, very ultra feminine, sweet, fruity, floral. When I want to smell feminine, this is the fragrance that I have been wearing. This is such a gorgeous, juicy, crisp, peony, patchouli, lychee scent. So you have a little bit of like a like a tart sourness in the fragrance mixed with this really pretty feminine floral vibe. 
Then you have a little bit of a sweet fruitiness going on and it's just gorgeous. It is a really beautiful fragrance, especially for a woman. But I do, however, feel that you can find something similar for much cheaper. Because the DNA of this scent has a really kind of designer-esque vibe, and I don't mean that in a negative way, I'm just telling you guys. Because of the DNA of this, I do feel like you could find a cheaper version, but nonetheless, I had well, I blah, 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 blah. nonetheless, I wore this fragrance a lot this year when I wanted to feel feminine, but really sexy at the same time. That's when I wore a trap rep, and I do really like the scent. Would I repurchase it if I went through my whole bottle? I don't think so but I do really like it and I wore it a lot. Another fragrance that I re-fell in love with this year, I've had this fragrance in my collection for a while, maybe about three years now, but I only re-fell in love with it this year. This is Santal Noir from Dior. I feel like this is by far the most underrated Dior fragrance, like by far, and it is so beautiful, you guys. This is sandalwood and rose and musk, and it's so, Good. Oh my gosh. I get it. Like I, I spoke about this in another video, but for me, this is like the balance between, you know, Western and like Middle Eastern perfumery in a way. Like it's not the same as Oud Isfahan or Purple Oud or those really intense Oud fragrances from Dior. Santal Noir is perfectly in the middle between those two universes. This is this gorgeous rose fragrance with a lot of sandalwood. You have a bit of a spiciness, a dryness, a bit of a smokiness as well. Like this smooth kind of smokiness, a muskiness, and it's just so beautiful. Very, very sensual. Like for me, this is a really sensual fragrance that I would wear on a date, I would wear in an intimate setting. It's just so gorgeous, you guys. And smelling it, I'm like, should I bring this one with me to Australia? Maybe, maybe. But then saying that, I brought this one with me to Cannes. And I remember I sprayed like 40 sprays of it on my body. And I met with somebody from the industry. And I was like, oh, do you like my scent? And he was like, I don't smell anything. And I was like, I literally sprayed 40 sprays of this. And for me, I want people to smell me. So maybe I will not take this one with me to Australia, but I love it so much. It's such a gorgeous fragrance, really intimate and sensual sandalwood fragrance with rose, musk, spice, dry, like smokiness. I love, love, love this scent. A gourmand that I loved so much this year and I wore a lot during the summer, like summer in Dubai I'm talking about, is Gossip Night from Gritty. This was definitely a really hyped release this year and one that I absolutely loved. Gossip Night is this gorgeous kind of creamy, warm, almost like a milky tropical gourmand scent. I think you have some peach, caramel, whipped cream. You are seeing where I'm going with this. This is a very like, I don't know how to explain it, but it's a very feminine gourmand. It's a very cute gourmand fragrance and I love it. You have this really tropical vibe going on. I think there is also some mango in here, a lot of peach, a lot of caramel, a lot of whipped cream, so it really has that creaminess going on overall, and I just love it, you guys. This is another one that I'm smelling like, should I bring this with me? I'm not sure, but it's so good. It's really creamy. It's really feminine. It's really scrumptious on the skin, and I just really loved wearing this one earlier this year, so Gossip Night from Gritty was definitely one of my favorite gourmand releases of the year. Uh, especially for the summertime. Like if you have this fragrance, wear it in the summer because it definitely shines more than wearing it in the winter because of the note breakdown in here. Because of all of those tropical fruity notes, I feel like it works way better in the summer rather than in the winter, but I love this fragrance. It's really good. Okay, a surprising favorite of mine, and I say surprising because I was not really expecting to love this fragrance that much. This is Kayali's The Wedding Silk Santal. This is such a beautiful, really, again, feminine, sweet, kind of powdery, oh, just gorgeous fragrance, you guys, really gorgeous. I would actually say that this fragrance is quite similar to Vanilla 28, but taking a more feminine approach. Now, I have the notes on the back. You have champagne, freesia, praline, nectarine, sandalwood, and musk. I get a lot of a lot of sweetness, so you definitely feel the praline, like this vanilla. You get this kind of marshmallowy touch as well in here. 
I also get a lot of the sandalwood and musk in the base. You do have that fruitiness, but it's like a creamy fruitiness. It's not like an obvious peach note or an obvious nectarine note. It's like a kind of like an undistinguishable creamy fruitiness. And it's just so good. Praline, vanilla, musk, sandalwood. I love this fragrance, you guys, so much. I think it's really addictive, really sexy, really feminine. Just like, I don't know, it just smells so good. Like it's really a scrum another scrumptious fragrance, but not going too gourmand. It's definitely not a straight gourmand that smells edible. You do have some other notes in there to kind of break it up, but I love it. The Wedding Silk Santal, really, really beautiful fragrance from Kayali. I definitely think this is one of their best releases of the year. For me, much better than Young Pistachio Gelato, even though I still really like that one. But I, I really loved this fragrance. It was definitely one of my most worn, you can see from the bottle. Another most worn fragrance for me was Oud Satin Mood from MFK. You guys, I went through about two years where I absolutely hated this fragrance, maybe even more than two years. I think that this fragrance just became a little bit too strong for me at some point, especially living in Dubai. And also I started to feel like the fragrance smelled like toilet paper. Like I know that's really weird, but I just started to get this like toilet paper smell and it just really bothered me. So I don't know where that came from, but it happened. And anyways, I decided like one night a few months ago to wear it like I was like I really want a beautiful rose and oud fragrance and I decided to wear oud satin mood and I just fell madly in love with it and I know this is kind of strange but for me personally the best time to wear oud satin mood is a summer night I know some of you probably think what on earth the best time to wear oud satin mood for me is a summer night a night where it's hot and maybe it's a little bit humid even and you spray on outside and mood and it's going to explode on your skin you will see that this fragrance i'm not telling you to wear it on a summer day even though a lot of uh people in the middle east they wear fragrances like this on summer days at 45 degrees celsius like they no no problem sometimes me as well but try wearing this on a summer night and you will see it is so spectacular. So after that night, and I actually got a compliment that night, I just started wearing it again. I was like, I love this fragrance. I don't know what happened, but I'm just happy to be back in love with the scent. And yeah, I don't know. It's one of the most beautiful opulent rose ouds. It's very powdery. It has more of like a candied sweetness rather than like a sticky gourmand sweetness. It has a really strong powdery sweetness to it. I think you have some benzoin, violet, vanilla, rose oud, whatever, but it's just spectacular. A very opulent fragrance that I absolutely love. I don't want to talk about this. I do not want to talk about it. This is Bianco Latte. You guys already know. I fell into the hype completely. I was lusting after this scent for such a long time uh, before I got the bottle into my collection. This is such a good vanilla fragrance, like truly you guys, like the, the hype around Bianco Latte is so real. And I'm gonna tell you right now, um, I have not owned the fragrance for that long, so I'm not gonna tell you like all year long, I got compliments, but ever since I started wearing Bianco Latte, I have always gotten somebody comment on it. It is insane. And I really didn't believe the hype. Like I didn't believe all of the videos that I saw about it before I got it into my collection, but there is something about this scent that people just love. And I personally believe it's the fact that the fragrance is so strong. If you guys don't know how Bianco Latte smells, this is a beautiful, beautiful, milky, creamy, caramel vanilla fragrance, like just done to perfection. And like I said, I believe the thing that separates Bianco Latte from everything else is its enormous longevity and projection. The projection on this little thing is insane. Is insane. Like whenever somebody wears this fragrance, you're going to smell it for hours after they've left the room. It is a really, really strong fragrance. It is a really strong fragrance with a really appealing DNA. So putting those two components together, you're gonna get compliments from this scent and it's just amazing. A really creamy vanilla fragrance with some kind of burnt caramel touches and it's just so good. I wore it so much ever since I got it into my collection. I am taking this one with me to Australia because I want to get complimented. I want to get complimented and I know that 
this is how I get complimented these days. So yeah, I'm taking Bianco Latte with me and I cannot wait to wear it in Australia. Because it actually works in summer, autumn, winter, spring for me. I wear fragrances like Bianco Latte at any time of year. It doesn't matter. And same with this fragrance. Now, at the beginning of this video, I told you guys that I do have a current obsession. And that current obsession is Altair from Parfum de Mali. Now, if you guys saw like the first video that I made reviewing this scent, uh, it was in like a list, I think. I wasn't really impressed by Altair and I think it just needed time to grow on me. After smelling it like for the first time, I wasn't impressed. I was kind of like, okay, it's nice vanilla, like it's okay. It's another vanilla. But the more and more that I started wearing this scent, the more and more that I became appreciative of how incredible that this is. And this is not to sell it to you guys. I don't care at all. I would rather nobody smell like this and just me smell like this because right now, Altaya is actually my signature scent. I know that that's really weird and it's kind of a weird signature scent to have, but right now Altaya is my signature scent. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this is my favorite layering combination. I spray on Altaya a lot of sprays of this one everywhere and I only put about four sprays of Bianco Latte on top because this is so strong compared to Altaya. And it smells, guys, the compliments, oh my gosh, are insane. I actually got complimented from the perfumer, one of the perfumers of Altaya when I was wearing it uh, in Paris. And I just get compliments nonstop whenever I go to Pilates with this combination on, compliments. Whenever I go to the mall, compliments. Whenever I go to a meeting, compliments. I get so many compliments for this. And again, I'm not saying it to encourage you guys to buy it. Like it's not, I don't care. I'm just telling you guys, it is shocking. The amount of people that react when I wear this, it is amazing. Now, it's a really complex vanilla. And to be honest, I have never really heard anybody describe the scent accurately because it's too hard to describe accurately. This is a vanilla fragrance, but it's quite a dark vanilla. I'm gonna say something, but it's kind of weird. I almost get a slight cacao vibe, like it's very subtle cacao vibe from Altaya. You have the vanilla, you have the orange blossom in the opening, you have praline, which is absolutely delicious in here. You have, I think some cinnamon, you have some elemi, which gives off a resinous touch, which you do feel in the scent. You feel a slightly resinous vibe in here, along with the vanilla, a little bit of cacao, which is strange. You have some guy in the base, but overall, I would say this is a uh, vanilla fragrance with that little cacao. You have a resinous vibe from the Elemi, a touch of orange blossom and a woodiness in the base. So it's really hard to describe the way that this smells. Like it, I have never heard anybody describe it like on the spot of how it is because it's very special. And I just, I love it, you guys. And I was so excited because the perfumer, like I said, that I met that complimented me on this, told me that it really suits me. Like this scent, it really smells like me. And that was really a compliment. So I love it so much, especially this combo. This is coming with me to Australia 100% because I, like I said, I wanna get compliments. I need a little boost. Right, that is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my most worn fragrances of the year. Um, and yeah, let me know guys, what was your most worn fragrance? Comment one fragrance that you could not stop wearing this year. I would love to know. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.